Hey everyone, today we're going to build an awesome looking LED light display using a custom PCB with an AT2085 and a hack job programmer. Let's go. I need some proto board, 4 neopixels, 10 microfarad capacitor, dip 8 socket, 300 ohm resistor, AT Tiny 85 microcontroller, power cable. We actually only need a small strip of the proto board for this project, so we're going to use a Stanley knife and a ruler to score the PCB. We need four pins across for the dip 8 socket. So we score along the current holes, maybe about 10 times. We're not looking at cutting through. We take some pliers, close to the edge, and then bend. And it snaps off, and we are left with a bit of PCB. Now we want to take our power cable, and we want to measure approximately four centimeters in length. We're gonna cut it, separate the wires, and we're gonna strip the ends. We're gonna now start attaching all the parts to the PCB. We wanna take the dip package first and put that in so it's sitting vertically like this with one row on the left and all the rest of the space on the right. Easiest to do one first to make sure it's held in place and then do the opposite corner. Let's check it first and make sure that it's sitting nicely. It's a bit high on one side, so we can fix that by just hitting up that point again, pushing down a little bit, and as you can see, it's nice and flat. Now we can finish off soldering the board. We want red at the top and black at the bottom. And we want it to go down this way into the board. We now have our power cable and our socket. Okay, we're now going to place our 10 microfarad cap between the power and the ground rails. You can obviously see there's a negative line here, which is the shorter pin. So that will go on the black rail. So we want to place it in like this, and we want to make sure there's enough leads there that we can fold the capacitor over so we don't get the height. I'm going to now bend these pins just to hold it in place a little bit. We will be bridging these together on each side, but not yet. So now we want to neatly trim off the ends. Okay, we now want to bring ground to the package. This pin here, bottom left, is the ground and we want to bring that around the side here and over to the ground rail. But we want to make sure that we don't interfere with this bottom right hand side, because that is GPIO zero on the microcontroller. We're going to place one end of the wire here and the other end is going to go, we're going to skip that one hole and it's going to go there. So the actual wire goes around the chip on the side. And we have access to GPIO zero right here. So we're going to fold this pin over so we can touch the ground pin on the socket. And we're not going to do anything with the other pin yet because we're going to be putting the last pin here for the ground is going to go to our strip of NeoPixels. Right now we just want to solder this one side in, lean our capacitor over now, just get it out of the way. We first want to solder the pin in and then bridge it so they're both connected. Okay, we now want to take our resistor and we want to put it in between GPIO0, which is the pin we're going to be using to control the NeoPixels, and the actual NeoPixel data line. So I'm going to take the resistor and I'm going to fold over one pin so we can make the resistor stand vertically. Because there's not a lot of space in here. And the vertical resistor is fine because the IC is going to be sitting on top of the socket anyway, which is going to give us quite a bit of height. So the resistor won't be sitting higher than we need. So it doesn't matter which direction you put this in because a resistor is not polarized, so there's no positive or negative lead. So we're going to put it in GPIO zero, and we're going to just bring it out diagonally over to there. Fold this pin over, so it's touching the GPIO zero pin of the socket. I'm going to now solder that in place, but leaving the other one still untouched, just like we did with the ground line. And now we want to trim off that excess there. 
holding it so it doesn't go flying in your face. It's now time to work on the NeoPixel strip. As you can see with the strip, there's an in arrow pointing this way and an out arrow pointing through. You want to make sure that you wire the strip from the in, not from the out, otherwise it won't work. And I'm just going to put some solder on the pads, makes it easier to put the wires on afterwards. Just a blob of solder, and now we can put the different wires on. I'm going to turn it the other way around, just it's easy for me to work that way because I'm right-handed. So as you can see up top there's ground, then there's data, and then there's spy bolts. So we'll start off with the ground. Be careful not to hold the iron and the wire for too long because you might burn yourself. Attach the wire, let it cool before you take your hand away. So as you can see, we've now got ground, data and 5 volts attached to the strip with the data going this way. We now want to attach the strip to our PCB and this is a little bit tricky mainly because we don't want to damage the strip by pulling these wires too hard. So the first thing we want to do because the wires are actually going to have to wrap around to the board is we want to hold where we've soldered just to give it a little bit of support and just bend the wires around just give it a little bit of a flex just to get them in a rough rotation so they're easier to work with just like that. So let's start off with just feeding the ground wire through. There's a spare spot for it which we left. I'm going to fold that wire over just so it'll stay there and we want to get the previous wire that we had and bend them all over so they're all leaning on each other. Now we're going to solder all of them in place and we want them all to touch. So now we've got our ground wire and the pin, we've got our ground going to the NeoPixels, we've got our ground for the capacitor and our ground from the power rail all connected together. Put the power the same way. I'm going to put it in, bend it over. We now have our power line all connected. Now it's time for the data. So the data goes into the other end of the resistor. So we can just place the data right in here. I'm going to fold it towards that resistor lead that is still sticking out and we're going to fold the resistor lead over the data. As you can see just in here we've got those two leads now over each other. So hold those in place, careful not to bridge to the power or to the ground. And finally we take that little bit of wire off and careful with the strip. Okay, the last thing we want to do is actually connect our power rail to our power pin. So I'm going to take a small red jumper wire and I'm going to place it between the two, just like this. Fold one one way and one the other way. And once again, we want to just be careful. We want to bridge just the power line and we don't want it to touch the data. We now have our power line all the way through, our ground all the way through. So to use the ATtiny85 chip, we need to program it. And because it's a chip by itself, we need some type of mechanism to do that. I have built a programmer based on Brian Locke's video that showcases how to build one. I'll put the, a link in the description. Basically, it's a programmer that plugs into an Arduino Uno. We've got our 10 microfarad capacitor on there. We've got a resistor on pin zero, which in this case is just going to an LED, so we can do a blink sketch on it. The notch is on this end which means the little dot on the microcontroller has to be sitting on this pin just here. So let's get the microcontroller in, being very careful to make sure that the legs all fit in the socket. We don't have any legs hanging outside the edge, which is quite a common thing when you're putting chips into sockets. We're going to grab our cable. Right now this chip shouldn't do anything because it's never been programmed before. There's no built-in LED pin like pin 13 that you normally get on a microcontroller on this chip. So we're going to use pin zero, which obviously, as I said, the LED is plugged into. So let's start off by opening the blink sketch. The Arduino is used as a programmer. So if we look at all the setup, we've got a board, ATtiny 254585, and the actual processor we've got selected is the ATtiny85. 
It's using an internal clock at 8 megahertz, and the port is currently the port that the Arduino is plugged into. And I'm currently using the Arduino as a programmer, rather than programming the Arduino directly. Okay, so I'm going to compile and upload the sketch. It does an erase, then a write, then a read. And as you can see, the LED is blinking. So the chip works, that's great. So now let's put our code on for the light display. I'm just using Adafruit's NeoPixel strand test code. I'm making sure that it's set to pin zero because that's the pin we're using for our data line and that there are four LEDs. The only modification I've had to make to this script really is I added this extra line that I found that if I didn't set the clock prescale when it's set to eight megahertz that it didn't work properly. By default, this script has actually got this entry for 16 megahertz. Okay, so let's compile that and put that on the chip. And once this is done, the blinking light will stop because the blink sketch is gone and the chip is ready and waiting to get put into the project board. Okay, it's now time to plug our microcontroller chip into the socket. So first thing, we just want to make sure, looking at the microcontroller chip, the little dot on the top. We want to make sure that that is facing up. You can see the little mark at the top of our socket that indicates that this top left is where that dot should be. So we'll take our chip, we gently place it into the socket, making sure that the legs are all lined up nicely. Make sure it's in all the way, all our pin legs are in correctly. Okay, now we're going to take our five volt power. This is a five volt, two amp power supply. We're gonna plug it in and hopefully the LEDs will start flashing. Right, so we have success. We have a little AT Tiny 85 microcontroller board. We've got a capacitor for power filtering. We've got our resistor for our data line. Perfect. Let's now assemble it inside a case. Let's look at all the parts we need for a case. A top, bottom, some sides. But of course, not everyone's got a laser cutter, so we can use a 3D printed base and a 3D printed top. But not everyone's got a 3D printer. You can just build something out of foam board. It doesn't have to be laser cut or 3D printed. Okay, let's do the assembly. So we've got some blue tack we're gonna to use to put on the bottom of the PCB. We've got our strip, we've got the bottom plate, and we've got one of the sides, so we can use that as a guide to where everything's gonna sit. So the first thing we wanna do is carefully peel off the sticky on the back of the strip in the center of the base because that's where a vertical acrylic is going to sit on top of it. So we get it roughly in the right spot, doesn't be perfect. The reason we're putting blue tack on the bottom is A, we don't want to scratch our acrylic with all these sharp bits, but we also want to keep it in place, but we don't want it to necessarily be permanent. I don't want to hot glue it. So we want to get our frame into place, just like this, roughly in the right spot. And then we want to stick our PCB down carefully without breaking the wires, just like that. So it's inside the frame and our power is going to sit just at the end there. Awesome, step two. We're now going to grab our top bit. We're going to grab screws, nuts. We're going to stick our screws in the top. Move that to the side. We're going to carefully fold it over without dropping our screws out. And now we're going to stick one edge in. We're going to stick another edge in. We're going to then stick our clear. And now we're going to take our base, turn it over and Carefully get that into place. We get our screws, or well, holding it still, screw them on. Okay, and we have base. And as you can see, the LEDs are sitting just inside. There's some wires in the way, that's okay. Using tweezers or something else, just move them out of the way, just gently. Okay, we have our base. We'll take some acrylic that I pre cut, slot it in, as you can see, just like that. Grab the power. Plug it in, and off it goes. Look at that. That looks awesome.